the summit when he was 14. Yeah. He moved out yeah. a few years later. Yeah. I mean, he really wasn't in the house for more than a few years. I think yeah. most people liked the kitchen part where they had that little alcove yeah. that was a separate room. Kind of a pantry. The pantry, yep. yeah. It's also our only haunted house. <laughs> I, as a kid, I think I lived in four or five houses before, yes, before I was in first grade. Did you really? really? Mm -hmm. We lived on Hamlin and what's the street over the Hague? Is that first street after the bridge or Selby? Oh. Selby's the first one after the bridge. So we lived at Hamlin and um, Selby mm -hmm. and we lived at 1302 Stanford and we lived at 2098 Stanford and we lived at 2020 Jefferson and we did it. How can you just move? How can you move so because, much? Because um, every back then, my mom and dad's first house was $1,800 and that's how you made money and upgraded. By the a couple of years later, the next home was 3000 and they were getting bigger. And they, they yeah, they an kept $8, upgrading. Home. They, were just, they didn't take, you know, they were in such low uh, cost houses. They just kept stepping up until they got to Juliet. I think he paid nine thousand for Juliet. I don't know. I don't. It could have been. And then he. But um, where? So why? Why he was in the army for World War Two? He probably got a GI loan. I expect for one something. I think my dad was at twenty oh, sure. twenty Jefferson. He, he won the war because my dad left and we lived. He was gone. Yeah. So I think he must have gotten a GI loan for uh, 2098 Stanford. What year did he go in the war? 41. Went in 41. And here was the worst part. So I, I, I loved learning all these stories from him when I was looking at the book. Is um, he, he literally did his boot camp and his training and he was preparing with his unit to go overseas to fight. And he said, and then one day um, a couple of MPs showed up and said, these two lieutenants down here want to talk to you. And they shuttled him down, and and they, they said, uh, we understand you actually have experience working with that IBM accounting machine? And he said, yeah. And they said, oh, perfect. We've just transferred you into our unit. Um, and he's like, well, i got to go clear out my footlocker. And he says, no, the MPs have already done that. You're already, you're not going anywhere. And they felt so bad for stealing him that they actually agreed to pay him an extra $50 a month out of their pocket. So his pay was $50 a month, and he got an extra 50 And he wasn't going to go to active combat. Yeah. This was like sounding almost too good to be true. The gotcha was, so Grandpa did all the books for the NCO clubs over all of Europe. He did all the, the accounting for them which also meant that when the war was over and everyone else got to go home, Grandpa spent an extra two years in the... Because he had to close all the books. As they closed all the clubs, he had to do all the book work. So he couldn't he couldn't go home when everyone else got to go home at the end of the war. We, my mother had no job, and that's the only money we had coming in. So we had another family come and live with us. Uh, well, two families. One first family didn't work out. And nobody she ever knew. I mean, it was family she couldn't ask the paper for. Somebody asked the dad. My mother had to sleep in a bed with a total stranger woman because that's how rough the money was. Yeah. But then she had her go, and then she had one of my dad's brothers, mm -hmm. and it was his wife and yeah. kids came. So we lived with another family for the whole time. Mm. Yep. In a two-bedroom house. Mm. You know, one of my other favorite that could never, ever, ever happen today compared to back then was Grandpa went down to have something worked on his Social Security and they couldn't find a Social Security card. And they're saying, you know, when they're researching and researching further and they said they realized that you're not a citizen. You never, when your grandpa came down, when Grandpa George came down from Canada, he became a citizen, but he never had his children. He just assumed that his children became citizens when he did. Mm -hmm. So Grandpa Joe was not a citizen. And Grandpa Joe was saying, I don't get this. I fought in the war. <laughs> and he's saying, with which I army? Social Security. Yeah, you bet. But when I they said, for what army did you fight with? He's like, the U.S. Army. 
They're like, what? No, you have to be a citizen to fight in the U.S. Army. He says, well, so after realizing that what the mistake, the guy apparently made a couple of phone calls and he said, you know what? We're swearing a bunch of citizens this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Just show down up at this thing and, and raise your hand and take the pledge. We'll make you a citizen today. <laughs> yeah, he had his picture taken, and that's how he became a citizen. He was retired. He was at retirement age. Dave, Mom, and Dad were Yeah. All of that. Yeah. Now, see, today, if you could just wander down to the immigration office and say, hey, by the way, I forgot to get an, a, a, a citizenship 50 years ago. Just how about signing me up today and let's call it even. Wouldn't he have had to have a social security for something? It, well, for that? his social security. Well, whatever it was. He However, he managed to, he wound up having, it, he wound up being able to contribute, but... Mm -hmm. He couldn't, he wasn't a citizen. Basically, it was a papermake mistake that allowed him to get his Social Security without being a citizen. But the citizenship meant he couldn't get a passport. He couldn't leave the country. He, basically, he was an illegal alien. <laughs> His whole life. <laughs> His whole life.